الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الكريم أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله we thank and praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى who gathers us today and uh, this is uh, a very special occasion for me as I've been waiting so long to meet Maulana subhanallah we always watch Maulana and Maulana is very inspira inspirational to all of us alhamdulillah and I you know, prefer to call Maulana our teacher because we learn so much from Maulana. And I remember there's a statement that uh, has, has gone around that when you listen to Sheikh Sulaiman Mullah, study his lectures because there's gems coming out which you can listen to and hear. But intrinsically, between the lines, you need to read as well because there's much more lessons that you can take from there. Tonight, Wallahi Jamaat al Muslim, we are honored to have our honorable teacher. And I hope it is fine for Maulana that we mention that because truly you are our teacher. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve Maulana for many more years insha'Allah ta'ala to benefit the ummah. Amin ya rabbal alameen. And tonight here in Masjid Tuba, we have our honorable Sheikh Sulaiman Mullah. I don't want to take any time insha'Allah ta'ala. So immediately I will say fali tafaddal mashkura insha'Allah. Hayakum Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن نظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قطمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكذلك أخذ ربك إذا أخذ القرى وهي ظالمة إن أخذه أليم شديد صدق الله العظيم An apple fell and Isaac Newton discovered the law of gravity. Sadly, tens of thousands of Palestinians have fallen and no one has discovered the law of humanity. An apple fell and the law of gravity was discovered. Tens of thousands of believers have fallen and no one has discovered the law of humanity. ذهب الناس وبقي النس ناس ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما said humans are gone now we don't have ناس we have نس ناس قيل ومن نس ناس يا ابن عباس he was asked what is نس ناس he said الذين يتشبهون بالناس وليسوا بالناس it is people who resemble humans but they are not humans like we always say there is a big difference between human being and being human. We might be human beings, but are we being human? No, we're not being human. When the boycott and the siege was imposed against the Prophet وسلم, and the Banu Hashim in its most brutal form, then there were elements from within the non-Muslim community that stood up against it. And we salute up till today those who can give voice to the voiceless and stand up for the oppressed regardless of what the differences of religion, culture, ethnicity or geographical boundaries will be. Amongst those people, and we pay homage and tribute and recognition, and that's the beauty of Islam, that we stand for justice and we stand against oppression. Mut'im bin Adi, we need to know. When we talk of the rich seerah of our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then there is a chapter in the books of hadith known as mukafa'a. Mukafa'a means reciprocation. So our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very particular to reciprocate, acknowledge, and compliment anyone who did him a favor, Muslim or non-Muslim. Some years back, I had delivered a talk about the importance of reciprocation and a young man was sitting in the gathering and then subsequently he came to me and he said, I implemented that one advice 
And in my company, I just climbed the corporate ladder. From a regular employee, I became, I was promoted and promoted to a manager purely because everyone had a good word regarding me that this man always acknowledges, compliments, and appreciates people. When the delegation of Abyssinia came to Makkah Mukarramah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up to receive them, to acknowledge them, to compliment them. And the companions who were always rallying around him and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, لو تركتنا كفيناك لو تركتنا كفيناك if you sit down and you relax, O oh Nabi of Allah, we will suffice on your behalf. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Innahum kanu li ashabi mukrimin. They honored my sahaba when no one honored them. So to reciprocate and acknowledge them, I will stand up myself. When sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the infamous siege was imposed and the boycott, the social economic boycott was imposed in the valley of Abu Talib against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Banu Hashim. And again, I make a side comment here that that was the last three years in the life of our mother Khadija Radiallahu Anha. So generally, any woman, any spouse is looking for ease in the latter part of their life. I've been with you in your tough days. It was struggling in the challenging days. Now it's towards the tail end. Probably it's time to take a back step. It's to sit. It's to unwind. It's to relax. But salute and tribute and homage to this great stalwart and this most unique woman of Islam, Khadija Al-Kubra radiyallahu anha, who wedded our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the age of 40, and she bore him six children. Tahir Qasim, Zainab Ruqayya, Umm Kulthum, and Fatima radiallahu anhum ajma'een. And she was also subjected as part of the family at the age of 62. And she came out and she passed on. So three of her final years were spent there. That is devotion and dedication. We often like to cherry pick certain aspects of the life of Khadija radiallahu anha, her entrepreneurial skills. She is the one who sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on a business mission, rightfully so. You know, often people would say the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had sprinkled water on Ali and Fatima radiallahu anhuma at the time of nikah. And then they would say, you know what, could you read and sprinkle? Well, let's just take a step back and study the whole life and how they got married. And then the culmination was with that gesture and that practice. And now if we take that in isolation and we omit what preceded and what followed, are we optimistic of that same blessings? Surely this is something the Prophet Wasallam did. But it was, was it only about sprinkling water or was it preceded by something and followed by something? I often say without fear of contradiction that the noble companions, may Allah be pleased with them, they were more conscious of death in their weddings than we are in our funerals. We don't think of death in our funerals as much as the Sahaba thought of death in their weddings. Yet you and I would say there's a dichotomy, it's alien, it's foreign, it's contrasting, it's on two opposite ends. It means a wedding. What's there to be thinking of death? Salman radiallahu anhu got married to a woman in Kinda. And when he arrived there, the house was draped up. It was all beauty. So he said, frankly, in his simple, beautiful way, أَمَحْمُومٌ بَيْتُكُمْ أَمْ تَحَوَّلَتِ الْكَعْبَةُ فِي كِنْدَةِ why are you draping your house up? Is your house got fever? Humma, a mahmoomum baytukum, am tahawalatil kaaba to fi kinda. They said, Ma baytuna bi mahmoom, wala tahawalatil kaaba. No, no, neither of the two. So he said, Okay, then you're going to remove all these curtains and drapings and whatever else you have, all these fancy things. Okay? And then they present him with all these lovely exclusive gifts. And he said, Ma bihada awsani khalili. Ma bihada awsani khalili. Listen, my bosom friend, my dear friend, my close friend, my intimate friend, 
has advised me against this. Can you imagine the warmth in the transmission and the expression of the companion radiallahu referring to the Prophet sallallahu as Khalil? Ma bihada awsani Khalili. Ma bihada awsani Khalili. Ma bihada awsani Khalili. Awsani Khalili. Allah yakuna mata'i fi dunya illa kazad al rakib. My beloved dear friend had advised me sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that my possessions in this world should be no more than the possessions of a traveler. These are his words being echoed, articulated, pronounced at his own wedding. So when I say that, I don't, that's not an exaggeration. And I often say, Allah gave better sleep to the Sahaba in the battlefield than we enjoy in our hotels. What are you talking of sleep in the battle? An nuasu fil qitali min Allah, as you know. That sleep in the battle is from Allah and sleep in prayer is from the devil. We get it in the latter and not in the former. ثم أنزل عليكم من بعد الغم أمنة نعاسا يغشى طائفة منكم وطائفة قد أهمتهم قد أهمتهم أنفسهم يظنون بالله غير الحق ظن الجاهلية يقولون هل لنا من الأمر من شيء قل إن الأمر كله لله So sometimes we wonder that uh, why is there such delay when we know, understand and comprehend tyranny, oppression, exploitation, abuse is deplorable, detestable, despicable to Allah. Then why does the tyrant get so much respite, grace and clemency? And if we don't study our text, then we allow for a niche to become a gap and a gap to become a gulf. And then you create an open wide passage for devilish indoctrination. And then he festers and he feeds negative energy coming in with force aggressively where you start becoming awkward, uncomfortable with your faith. Remember one thing. It's academic, but Allah puts it in my mind, so I'm going to share it. It's not disbelief only that takes you out of the fold of Islam. It's doubt on the truth that is also tantamount to denial. Did you hear what I said, my brother and my sister? I'll qualify it through Quran, inshallah. With the grace of Allah, my passion is Quran, and that's what I speak. It's not only, and I don't say only trivializing it. I don't want to isolate it. There's a context to it. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا Rasul. Muhammad وسلم, is only a prophet. The scholars say uh, the negation or the, 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 the statement that he's only a prophet is not to trivialize the station of prophethood, but is to negate the station of divinity. It is nafyul uluhiyya. He is not the Almighty. It's not, to, it's not to lower the status of prophethood. That's the greatest status any human can have. وَأَرَادَ اللَّهُ أَن يُشَرِّفَهُ بِالنُّبُوَّةِ وَهَلْ فَوْقَ ذَلِكَ كَرَامَةً وَهَلْ فَوْقَ ذَلِكَ كَرَامَةً أَبَدًا So where Allah said, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not but a messenger. Nafyul uluhiyya. Because there was obviously the rumor that he had passed on in the campaign of Uhud. And can you imagine, and let me just say that because that's again in my mind here, and we learn from this. 
So when the rumor was being circulated that Muhammad وسلم, had passed away, it was the, the companion radiallahu anhu who resembled him. But the enemy exploited the moment to say your Prophet وسلم, has passed on to try and create a ripple effect of psychological weakness. And of course, this then gripped the companions by a host of challenges. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took to the heel top. Understand this. You see footage. I see pictures. He sees images. She sees carnage. And you become restless and rightfully so. If you have any, any, any thread of humanness in you, it's going to leave you restless. Can you imagine? The Nabi of Allah is amongst you. Iz tus'idun. Iz tus'idun. Remember the moment when you were ascending the hill. Wala talwoon. And you were not turning back. Kinayatun an shiddatil inhizam. Kinayatun an shiddatil inhizam. Allah Manasafi writes in Madarik, which was a denotion, an indication, and an expression of a sense of losing hope and courage. Or losing courage rather, never losing hope, losing courage. You were not even looking back. And the Nabi of Allah was calling out to you from the rear. فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّمْ بِغَمِّنْ أَيْ فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّمْ مُضَاعَفًا And then you were gripped by one layer of grief followed by another. Listen very carefully. Today people go for workshops and they go for this, you know, very fancy, exclusive, exquisite, nice hotel, costs you so much, glossy magazine, uh, you know, flowery words and everything. And then you come back. It's all about implementing. Otherwise... You know what they say in English? Well done is always better than well said. The whole world is today about well said. There's no well done. I'm not talking about a steak. That's a rare better. <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> it's all about well, well said. Well said. We need well done. All the rulers today in the world, what's it? All about well, well said, well said. Where's the well done? In fact, exactly as the Quran describes the hypocrite, the munafiq, that's precisely what you see playing out. I keep on saying to my audience, if you read Quran and you understand Quran, you will never ever be depressed as a believer because Allah has painted it in complete detail. وَمِنَ nas. مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ وَهُوَ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ وَإِذَا تَوَلَّ سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا وَيُهْلِكَ الْحَرْثَ وَالنَّسْلَ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَسَادِ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهِ أخذته العزة أي أخذته النخوة بالإثم فحسبه جهنم You will find some people من تبعيذ You will find some people whose speech, whose speech is exceptionally impressive They'll mesmerize you They will leave pin drop silence They will sway you They will cast a spell over you The way they talk, wow you must listen to his inaugural speech. It's just about securing the vote. It's just about winning the confidence. It's just about playing the right game. But I, I, I cannot imagine or comprehend the extent of how gullible the masses are. Look at the words of the Quran. Women and Nas, there are some people, men who, يُعْجِبُكَ when he talks, wow, this guy is amazing. He's, he's, he's got the clout. He's got the muscle. He puts his, uh, uh, you know what, puts his money where his mouth is. He, he, he walks the talk. He exhibits. 
But Allah says, I'm telling you, he's the worst of opponents. He's the biggest of liars. He's the most wicked of people. Look at the words. وَإِذَا تَوَلَّا And this is beauty, this is Arabic, right? So tawalla can have two meanings. Tawalla means adbar. Let him leave the gathering. Pull the camera off. Move away. And then see his colors. I mean, there's reports going around. Person slipped up while talking and the camera intercepted it. I'm talking of fresh. Second meaning, وَإِذَا تَوَلَّا الْأَمْرِ When he takes the reins. When he comes into office. He takes public office. وَإِذَا تَوَلَّا سَعَافِ الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا He uses his muscle and clout to expropriate, to abuse, to exploit, to usurp, to destroy. One of the most dangerous things in which rarely any human survives except the one whom Allah has pity on in mercy and guidance is the position of power and authority. And I'm not elevating it to the throne. I'm talking from a simple, basic, average, common level. As soon as humans move into power, it is such an intoxication and craze that their speech, their tone, their demeanor, their behavior just changes. May Allah bless my beloved father and grant all our parents goodness and afia. I have said this in so many of my talks locally and abroad. Uh, you know, it's now been speaking for the last 25 odd years. But for the first 15 years of my speaking career, my dad would critique me. And my dad would put strong measures on me. And at times I would cry to say that, Ya Allah, the whole congregation would compliment me and laud me and acknowledge me and extol my praises. But if there's one that would rebuke me, reproach me and chastise me, it was my dad. And by Allah, the thing for which he reproached me was the most was my son, you can talk for two hours and you can mesmerize tens of thousands of people. But when you walk out from there, if you don't have time to greet the local muazzin and you cannot put a loving hand on a child and you cannot leap forward to assist someone who is physically disabled or differently able, trust me, your lectures will have no impression on anyone. I have thanked him, not that I claim that I've lived up to the mark, but it's so easily overlooked. You don't realize it. You see, the problem with humans are, when they do wrong, they become the advocate of their own wrong. So it does, it's not subjected to a litigation. It's not subjected to a panel. you the boss, and you did something. Now it pricks you. Then he says, no, no, no. Somebody needs to tell him. If I'm not going to tell him, someone's going to tell him. Ah. I, I think it's fine. لا يرى بها بأسا لا يرى بها بأسا That's dangerous. That's dangerous. I do marital counseling and I don't envy myself for it. 25 odd years I'm doing it. Every time a couple leaves, I say, listen, we haven't resolved it. And I tell them I have a few home rules there. I say, see, you come in here. We're going to do a diagnosis. Nobody comes to the surgery and walks out cured. It's a diagnosis. Number two, before you do a medical assessment, they like to have some medical history. In the medical history, they want relevant, significant, and important facts. They don't want basic, irrelevant, and trivial facts. Uh, any medical history? Uh, yeah, I did sneeze. I had a cough. No, man, talk real things. You had trauma, you had an accident, hereditary sugar, and everything. Don't come tell me the petty, basic, average, common things here. Let's talk serious medical history. Uh, I often say that my mind is running in a thousand ways, and I haven't even started. <sighs> they say there's a child in every adult, right? But I haven't seen a more childish version of adults than quarreling couples. That's my statement. There is a child in every adult. I haven't seen a more childish version of adults than quarreling couples. They are so petty. They are so silly. They are so mean. They are so small. I lack the vocabulary and the synonyms to say it. 
It's like, look at how they're behaving. A childish, no, 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 even that's, see, when Allah says when humans lose their touch, they're animals, then Allah says, no, 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 no. You're insulting the animals. Listen to the verse. They animal. No, 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 no. You're insulting that. He's like a child. No, you're insulting a child. You're insulting a child. He's worse than a child. I have an eye for safari and I love wildlife. I love wildlife. It's the only thing that kind of quells me and relaxes me after long talks, etc. You know, I, I have, in fact, last week we were out with the family at a game park as well. And uh, so you look at these animals, you look at the lion because everybody wants to see it, right? It sleeps 20 hours a day. It's one of the lazy hunters, but people like it. Uh, it eats once a week. But then you realize that just eating, sleeping, indulging. This is its purpose of life. يَأْكُلُونَ كَمَا تَأْكُلُوا الْأَنْعَامُ وَالنَّارُ مَثْوَلْ لَهُمْ ذَلِكَ مَبْلَغُهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Humans have a greater purpose to existence. So I say to couples, I say, you know what? You came here, we didn't resolve the issue. But at least this much happened. Your wife challenged you and you challenged her. Both of your egos were deflated. And that's healthy. Somebody needs to challenge you. Somebody needs to challenge me. And I keep on saying to my parents, and I've cried and I've said it, because both my parents, may Allah bless them, they, they discipline me, they tell me a lot, they tell me till today. Not long ago I was giving a talk, and just casual because you're speaking every day, so I was just busy talking and I did this here, and I came out of the talk and my dad said, that's the last your hands goes in your pockets while you're speaking. That's the last, my son, your hands, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, like, you know what I mean? No, no, this club goes out and it's, you know, like, you know what I mean? And I said, Papa, I fear the day you won't be here. Because many will still tell me, but I don't know if they'll be motivated by sincerity or jealousy. I don't know that. But when you tell me, my dad, I have no doubt. And I say to the youth of today, your parents can err in the advice they gave you. But I swear by Allah, they never err in the motive of that advice. Your parents can err because they are fallible. They can make mistakes. They thought this was the right partner for you. They thought this was the right place for you. You can challenge their advice, but you can never challenge the motive of that advice. And I say that from a point of a parent. I cannot, I don't, I don't represent anything but your interests. And as a child, don't doubt your parent. Because the pains will be too much later. The regrets will be too much. May Allah guide us. Okay, we digress from, from where to where. I was saying to you, uh, I made the point that... Uh, Tyranny, oppression is evil, is wicked, is deplorable. And sometimes because we don't have a correct, adequate perspective uh, of, 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 of things. I mean, you're taking a medication for so long, for so long, and you're not seeing any results and everything. You say, no, these things are useless, hopeless, you know. And then you go to a doctor and he says, all right, how do you take it? Your problem is caffeine. You don't ever take it pre or post. You invalidate and nullify and weaken the effect of your medication. Oh, okay, okay, I didn't realize. You and I don't take the trouble to find out what's in the Quran. It is not sufficient to know it's in the Quran. It is important to know what is mentioned in the Quran about it. Do you know Aqsa? Yeah, I know Allah speaks about it in the Quran. What is Allah spoke? I'm not sure, but I know there's something about it. No, 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 no. That's insufficient. I need to know the details. Well, did you know the Prophet Sallallahu told us Allah's approach towards tyrants from the beginning of time has always been where Allah extends the rope 
and gives them so much grace and so much leniency and so much clemency that they become arrogant, obstinate and provocative to the highest level that they actually have the audacity to challenge the existence of Allah. Now if you don't know that, you will have difficulty reconciling what's playing out. Inna Allah la yumli al-zalim Hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflithu Thumma tala Wa kathalika akhdu rabbika idha Akhadha al-qura wa hiya zalima Inna akhadahu alimun shadeed Inna Allah la yumli al-zalim That's the words of the hadith Verily Allah gives grace Allah gives respite. Allah gives clemency. So, Pharaoh had the cheek and the audacity after killing tens of thousands of the Bani Israel. Cold blooded, mercilessly, he killed them. كان يعاملهم معاملة الحمير والدواب لا يعطيها إلا قوت يومها. He subjected them like, like a, a subhuman. They were treated like subhumans. Can I just ask our children to settle, inshallah? May Allah bless you all. May Allah bless you all. We love our children, and inshallah, may Allah grant us the ability to give them the correct love, warmness, kind, affection, and tarbiyah, inshallah. So he treated them with abuse. And he killed tens of thousands of people. As the Quran said, listen, that's why I keep on saying this here. There hasn't been a political, an economic, a social scenario that has played out in my life without me finding direction and indication in the Quran. But he was arrogant, man. The Quran says, wow. Just look, listen. And he decided to cast people in different ranks. The elite class and the lower class. Where the mighty would abuse and exploit and trample and weaken the poor and the vulnerable. He killed tens of thousands of people. Musa alayhi salatu was salam innocently, unintentionally, inadvertently killed one person. You know the incident? He was actually helping. He was helping. He came out and he found two people, the Coptic and the Israelite, the Qibti and the Sibti. Right? They were having an argument. So he said, oh, Musa, please come. فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيْعَتِهِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ Oh Musa, please come and help. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam came to the rescue and he aided him. And in aiding him, Musa alayhi salam gave him a punch. And the intensity of the punch was so strong that inadvertently it proved to be fatal that it floored him. Right? People want to rave about the UFC and... Uh, okay, let's not mention names. <laughs> Look at the strength and the clout of a Nabi. Look at the strength and the clout of a Nabi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his Hajjatul Wada, he consummated and had relationship with all his consorts in one night. Understand the strength of a Nabi. We live in a world, and I hope I can be respectful, there's more lust and less strength. Oops. <laughs> we live in a world where there's more lust and less strength. 
We live in a distorted world, my brother, forgive me. But because I deal with all of this here, and I hope I can be respectful, and I'd like to just say it in a context. So the Prophet ﷺ said, after you ate your food, don't lick your fingers. Until, don't wipe your fingers until you lick it or someone licks it for you. Imam Nawaw says, كَتَلْمِيذٍ أَوْ زَوْجَةٍ مِمَّنْ يَعْتَقِدُ الْبَرَكَةِ There's a hadith. So after you've eaten, don't wash it. فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَدْرُونَ فِي أَيِّ طُعَامِكُمْ الْبَرَكَةِ Because you don't know where the barakah lies. And that's where the magic lies. And that's the catalyst for good. So you could be washing away that portion on which there's barakah. And that's, what's, that's going to change everything. So often today when you talk about the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, don't wash it till you don't lick it or somebody to lick it, then <clears throat> for hygiene reasons, I choose to exercise my right of abstinence. And you're the very same one who wants to send me an email in privacy and ask me certain rulings about your bedroom. I say nothing more. To lick the fingers of your spouse is against hygiene. Please help me reconcile. I'm losing a point here. Help me understand. That's the hadith. This will generate affection, muhabba, baraka. Suddenly that's something you frown and scowl and object and disapprove about. And then to add flavor and spice the union and stimulate the relationship to another level, you seek in consent of something else. May Allah grant us the correct understanding and the beauty of our deen. Our deen as it is, is pure, is wholesome, is complete. If you're trying to temper with the deen, that's external influence that has obscured your lenses. So Pharaoh killed tens of thousands of people. Then he tells Musa alayhi salam, وَفَعَلْتَ فَعْلَتَكَ الَّتِي فَعَلْتَ وَأَنْتَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ But Musa, didn't you kill one person? You know what you did? The exact words is, but you know what you were up to? What, what, to, what, what tongue are you talking? Wait, hang out. Please help me here. You're a butcher. You're a massacre. You've killed. You're an autocrat. You're a dictator. You take unilateral decisions. You abuse, you kill, you murder, you loot. And then you want me or you condemn me for one unintended killing? And then he tells, he tells uh, Musa alayhi salatu, I'm saying, read the Quran. Read the Quran. So, so, so what's the systematic plan? Keep the believer away from the Quran. Plant the seed of doubt in him. That's why today, whenever youngsters come to me and uh, they have any questions, I sit them down. I welcome them. I say, no question is a taboo. Talk to me. If I know the answer, I will give it to you. If I don't know, I will help you. I can't claim that I know each answer. But I can tell you, Quran and Hadith has every answer. I might not know it, but it's there. But please come. Because today, if we don't welcome, entertain, sit, and engage, then of course, what happens? It opens a door, finds an accomplice, goes on the net, searches. Look at, look at how malicious the net is. Look at how malicious the world is. Somebody leaves his religion, he becomes an atheist. Somebody leaves his religion, he becomes an agnostic. But when someone supposedly leaves a Muslim, then he identifies as ex-Muslim. Go on the net and you'll see it, ex-Muslims. So you'll never hear that ex-Christians or ex-anything else. It's an atheist, it's an agnostic, he's done. But if anybody leaves away from deen, and you know what, my brother, may Allah guide me, may Allah guide you. This deen is beautiful, this deen is flawless. You're not harming me in any way. You are only harming yourself. Wallahu mutimmu nurihi walau karihal kafirun walau karihal mushrikun. But of course, we are living in very, very volatile times. That is something we cannot lie or deny. The times are very volatile, and the test is coming on iman. If, if a person's faith was grounded well from early years, then insha'Allah, he will be well insulated against this bacteria that is thrown out. But if he's not well insulated and buffered, then his vulnerability and susceptibility to these bacteria of kufr is very strong. 
You got to immunize yourself with the immunization of Iman. So I come back to the point I was saying to you uh, that Allah's system is he dismantles tyranny gradually. This is his system. He gives grace. Just, just look at the Quran. He gives grace, he gives allowance, and he allows this person to become firm on his horse. He becomes anchored in his tracks. He feels his absolute in his might. That Pharaoh has the audacity to say, he says, Dharuni, Dharuni, Aqtul Musa, Wal Yad'u Rabba. Listen, I'm tired of Moses. I want to take him on. And tell him, I said, he must come with his Allah also. I'm taking them both on. Read the verse. Dharuni aqtul Musa wal yad'u Rabba. Dharuni aqtul Musa wal yad'u Rabba. Inni akhafu an yubaddila deenakum. Aw an yudhira fil ardil fasad. This man is a cancer. See who's saying who is a cancer. Dharuni, back off. Leave me alone. Don't stop me. Aqtul Musa, I will assassinate him. Wal yad'u Rabba, he's free to call his Allah. The only reason why I'm coming forward is because he is a threat to the peace of the earth. Please read Quran, my brother. Please read Quran. I came out of a talk, a brother said, Wow, I've never felt so guilty. Nobody makes me feel guilty in any talk like you. I said, thank you. Guilt will stimulate action. But if I make you feel good and I pet you, huh? it's not going to help you. Today, each one is wrapped up in himself. What they say, don't pat yourself on your shoulder. You might just dislocate it. <laughs> the whole world is just petting themselves. Hey, but I'm good. Huh? Hey, but what a father. Hey, but what a husband. Hey, but what a wife, man. Huh? Wow, everyone's just petting themselves. The world is so desperate for recognition. I was giving a talk to some youth the other day. I said, I used to teach at a particular institute. Just look at the irony of the world. Come 14th of, uh, of February, I know of a young man who was not so physically attractive. The day before, he would go to the florist, buy flowers, and send flowers to himself the next day. <laughs> look at the world. So it's like, oh wow, whoa, whoa, way, oh check, oh, wow, wow, this guy's got a lot, man. See, oh, this guy is really gorgeous, man. He's amazing. He would buy gifts and send flowers to himself to just inflate his ego and feel good at school. That's the space and that's the desperation. You know, today in a marriage, they say, ah, oh, you know, we were supposed to get married. And then I told him, my dad is not well. And he said, he'll delay. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's so adorable. I just love this guy. Wow. Now there's these emojis also. Some of them are platonic and some of them are a bit dangerous. You don't even know. They're crossing certain lines. Lines are a bit blurred. They're hard, blue, pink, red. Oh, these things are a bit dangerous here. Emoji language can go this way, that way. Now the heart comes, you just keep quiet. Now, like, okay, what, what was this supposed to mean? Is this setting a tone, opening a chat, going deeper, or respectfully saying thank you? I don't know. I don't know. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. It's so gorgeous. That's not sweet and gorgeous. You know what's sweet and gorgeous? You know what's amazing and adorable? The hadith of Sahih Muslim. A non Muslim invites my Habib وسلم, for a meal. And he said, Wahadihi. You inviting me and my Aisha? I said, no, I'm only inviting you. Nabi Sassim said, okay, respectfully, then I'm not coming. Then he came back. He said, I want to invite you. Nabi Sassim said, wahadihi and my Aisha? He said, no, only you. Nabi Sassim said, then I'm not coming. Look at Nabi Sassim's tolerance. Not like, I told you one time. That's like, that's like, how, how amazing. They came to the Prophet وسلم, the Yahud, and they started said, "Assamu alaik." Sam with the distortion and twisting of the tongue means death versus peace. Layyam bi al sinatihim. Wa idha jaa uka 
She will be witness to this. Allah is my witness. I don't know how many times a day I cry and I look at the Quran and I say, Allah, I don't know where to begin to thank you for Iman. Allah, I don't know where to begin to thank you. I cannot possibly imagine a day in my life without reading and understanding the message of Allah. وَإِذَا جَاءُوكَ حَيَّوكَ بِمَا لَمْ يُحَيِّكَ بِهِ اللَّهِ And they come to you and they greet you contrary to how Allah greeted you. So they provoke a curse on you. And then they have the audacity to say, but if he was a prophet, why isn't Allah striking us? Look at, I cursed him and Allah hasn't struck us. That means he's a liar and an imposter. Oh man. So you, you, you're diabetic and you eat sugar and you feel good and say the doctor is a liar, I'm not diabetic. Okay, go home and check your sugar and you know who's the liar. So Aisha radiallana became so enraged. She said, Alayka sam wa dham wa la'na. May death be to you, wicked, evil, woe be to you. Nabi saw some hell and said, Aish, Aish, Aish. Allah loves gentleness at all times. Allah loves gentleness at all times. If we advocate gentleness, we'll advocate it. But not when someone's defending you. Then it's like you didn't hear it. You didn't hear the harshness because it's in your defense. This was in Nabi Sassim's defense. Aish, didn't you listen to my reply? The narration is Ibn Kathir, the verses of Surah Mujadala. Aish, didn't you hear my reply? I said, wa alaykum, same to you, same to you, without having to mimic and replicate that same obscene low language, I said, same to you, and we conveyed the message without being immoral or obscene. So the person comes back again, and he says, oh, Nabi of Allah, I'm inviting you. Nabi Sassam said, wa hadihi, and my Aisha said, she, she as well, faqama. Then they both stood up and they went. The shurrah, the commentators commenting on the hadith say, why the Prophet of Allah declined? And why did he subsequently accede, oblige and comply? Is because there was hunger at home. So the message was, oh my Aisha, if there's no food, we both sleep hungry. And if we're going to eat, we both eat. But it's never I eat and you hungry. That's love. That's profound. That's adorable. That's unique. That's real. That's perfect. Don't lose hope in Allah. The devil has two efforts. One is to make you do the wrong. And after doing the wrong, to make you despondent in Allah's mercy. If he defeated you in the first, don't give him the latter pleasure. Don't give him the latter pleasure. Don't. He wants to frustrate you. Listen, you know your nonsense. Every Saturday, this is what you're up to. Then Sunday, you're repenting. Then Saturday, you must behave in. Then Sunday, you're repenting. Then Saturday, you must behave in. Once I quoted this hadith, I'm going to try and start ending. What time is Adhan, Sheikh? No, don't, don't give me that uh, grace. <laughs> don't give me that. Yeah, there I agree. <laughs> they agree. May Allah bless you all. May Allah bless you. My brother, Allah is my witness. I receive so many emails from so many people who send me, I love you. I listen to you. You changed my life. Every time I cry, I say, Allah, I just hope from you. One out of these thousands you're going to accept and comes to my rescue in Akhirat. That's it. That's it. I'm just hoping that one out of all these people that tell me, I heard this, this happened to my life, I heard this, you inspired me, you motivated me. I'm just hoping one that it just attracts Allah's mercy. And that's it. لَوْ لَمْ تُذْنِبُونَ لَذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ 
If you were not to sin, then Allah will create you, replace you by a nation who would sin and repent and Allah would forgive them. So a, a person once asked me, are we then being encouraged in the hadith to sin? I said no. And Allah put this humble thought in my mind and I shared it. I said, uh, when you enter a house where there's children, you don't tell the children to make noise, but you expect noise. Then you say, oh, there's no children here. No man, this don't look like children, that's like an adult man. Children are those that make noise. Oh, okay, I'll start performing and throwing a tantrum. No. Out of the equation, it's just gone out, nowhere to be seen. Someone said in the Urdu language, Nange jism ko dampne ke liye koi kapra nahi deta. Or jism ko nanga karne ke liye log apni dolate luta dete hai. To clad the nude, nobody wants to offer surplus, surplus cloth or excess uh, uh, garment. Yet, to undress the clad, people spend tens of thousands of dollars. To clad the scantily dress or the nude due to shortage of dress and garment, they don't have. I, I, was, I do relief work with the Alimdad Foundation and Allah has taken me to different parts of the world. When the floods in Pakistan had happened, we were distributing aid. Allah is my witness. Allah is my witness. At one point we were giving out food, cooked meals, just not your rice and your oil and your sugar, etc. And we had a queue of people standing like everywhere else, converging. And each one would come in the little container vessel. By Allah, I seen with my own eyes tens of hundreds of people who came there and their only container was their garment. And the clothes were soiled, soiled, soiled. And then they just raised their garment. The food was dished out in that garment. Allah alone knows for how long they were wearing it. I then followed that man when he sat down. From the right came a goat, from the left came a child, from the front came an adult, and four of them eating from a plate which was made out of his own garment. Look at the irony of the world. What I said in my opening comments, there's a difference between human being and being human. We live in a strange world where the wealthy walk kilometers to digest the food, and the poor walk kilometers to find food. Previously, a man would keep a butler at the dog so that no dog enters. Now he keeps a dog at the door that no human enters. That's how life was. There was a butler there so no stray animal comes in. Now you keep a dog there. We don't want any humans here. Okay, let me try and wrap up. So Allah's system is that Allah will grip the dhalim. That's, that's guaranteed. That's guaranteed. That, that's the system of Allah. Now, Allah told the Prophet wasallam, everybody wants to witness the destruction of his enemy. But Allah told the Prophet wasallam, whether we destroy them while you're alive or we destroy them after your death, your mission remains the same at all times. Fajr is for us on me tomorrow morning at all times. Isha is for us on me at all times. Whether you're in a point of celebration or apparent defeat, the commands of Allah have to be adhered. Your hearts will burst. We haven't understood. So the Ummah is just gripped in this despondency. Absolute empathy, sympathy to the victims. But keep focus on what Allah has told. The worst can be the one who did nothing and becomes a victim of despondency. Like the ulama say, amongst the biggest of regrets on the day of Qiyamah will be a man who gathered a lot of wealth and he amassed it and he didn't donate it and he died. And then his son inherited it, and his son was generous. So through the generosity from his late father's estate, he went to paradise, and his father went to hell. 
Imagine you and I through despondency, after doing nothing, we lose our iman. May Allah protect us. The devil is operating constantly on everyone in a different way. In Urdu they say, history is just not a tale of the past. It's a moral compass for the future. Tariq sirf mazi ki kahani nahi hai. Mustaqbil ki tashkil ka kutb numa hauti hai. It's not only a tale, it's not only a story, or oh, Pharaoh happened. No, no, no. It's a compass for the future. Set your coordinates, put it right. Now you came to the wrong place. Well, if you set the wrong destination, where are you going to go? What's your destination? So, despondency is not in the language of a believer. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِمِّنْ قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا The manner in which Allah has addressed a zalim and zulam and oppression and how Allah will ultimately seize the system of tyranny. This is categoric, explicit, unequivocal, unambiguous in the Quran. However, we often make mistakes when we start setting times and dates. Don't set times and dates. The other day somebody sent me a clip. Somebody quoted a verse and he started, I said, the verse is Quran. It's, 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 it's perfect. It's impeccable, infallible. But the date is from you. Don't set dates. That's in Allah's knowledge. Don't set dates. That's in Allah's knowledge. Akadu ukhfiha. Akadu ukhfiha. Litujza kullu nafsim bima tasa. Qiyamat will come. But it's time. I'm going to keep it camouflaged and concealed and hidden. Yes, he's given you signs and symbols. But the truth is absolute. So I was speaking on this and I just want to wrap up on this note here. That uh, it's not only disbelief that takes a person out. It's even doubt. And we should never doubt Allah's promise in any way. In Allahi haq. Allah's promise is absolute. It will happen. My calculation is wrong. My estimation is wrong. Now, you go outside, somebody promised to come fetch you, and you thought he said 10 o'clock. So you're there from 10, and you're pacing up and down, and you're anxious, and you're anxiety, and you say, yeah, people don't care, they don't honor their word, what can people... Then you open your phone, and you see he said 12 o'clock. Oh, okay, yeah. Ouch. Now, you were in two hours of anxiety because of your own misunderstanding. Nobody defaulted, nothing changed, nothing was wrong. Say, for example, you didn't on the switch correctly and you said there's load shedding in this, you know what, power outages and every wait, 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 wait. There is a load shedding problem, but not at the moment. At the moment, it was a mishap on your side. When we don't understand what Allah has decreed, then we start confusing ourselves and our mind becomes fertile for devilish inf infiltration. And the devil pounces. So Allah refers to him as khannas. Khannas. La uqsimu bil khunnas. Al jawaril kunnas. Those that recede, withdraw, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. Constantly. Comes forward, throws, comes back. Comes forward, throws something, comes out. Constant. This is what Allah yuwaswisu fi su min sharril waswas. From the evil of the sneaking whisperer. Waswas, he whispers. Khannas, he withdraws. Because when you, when you turn to Allah and you back him off, he backs off. Again you become lame. Again you expose yourself to social media, to biased media, to, to, to one-sided reporting. Again you predispose yourself. Okay. Uh, let, let, let's really wrap up. May Allah bless you and reward you and may Allah make our stay here and our interaction meaningful and beneficial for all and that inshallah we can leave here spiritually rejuvenated inshallah and as better people and as better humans and as better global citizens. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. So Allah says, why is the devil on the earth? Because that is the mind is very, very inquisitive, you know. But like, what, what's this whole shaitan story about? Why did he come in the beginning? Why has Allah done this here? Sorry, man, I have this thought. The other day a youngster came to me. He said, uh, I think cannabis is halal. You know, light is today are smart. So I said, why? He said, because Allah allows it to grow. <laughs> so I said to him, so uh, if a teacher gives you a question paper and he gives you few answers 
and he says, choose the correct answer. Does it mean all correct or does choose mean one correct? He says, hey, you're smart, huh? <laughs> you're smart, huh? I, this is exactly what I told him. I said, if the teacher gives you all the answers, in, in brackets, gives you a question, he gives you 10 answers, and he says, choose. Does choose mean one correct or does choose mean all correct? He says, no one. So I said, well, that's exactly what Allah said. I've created this earth. Inna ja'alna ma'alal ardi zinatan laha linabluwahum ayyuhum ahsanu amala wa inna laja'iluna ma'alayha sa'idan juruza. Whatever is, is adornment, is beauty, is attraction, is, is transitory, is temporary, is aesthetics. Uh, and I want to see who behaves and who chooses the right. And I've sent the Nabi. So this is Allah's prerogative. You can't enter into the domain of Allah and question his authority. Who, who the hell are you? And who the hell am I? Because today the mind is, no, I, I, I don't understand. This but who the hell are you? Hogwash. You try and tell the boss, he says, uh, listen, tomorrow we're starting at 9. You say, why 9? He says, your last day. <laughs> your last day, go. Challenging me. Just, just look at the watch, go in, you know, just casually when your boss walks in, just look at it, let us and see you gone. <laughs> well, what, what, you, what you insinuating to me at the time? Who the hell are you to tell me? And you own one two by two shop. Huh? Allah says, run. Run, run. Again, Quran, man. Oh, I don't know what to say. Run. Run as far as you want. Go skip the country. Go skip the planet. Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-insi in istata'tum, in istata'tum, in istata'tum an tanfudhu min aqtari samawati wal-ardi fanfudhu. Come all of you, try and run, escape, elope, flee, run out, run from the sky, run from the earth, run from the atmosphere. I want to see where you're going to run, where it's not my power and my kingdom. I said to yesterday, I was giving, okay, sorry, let me stop. <sighs> I, I cannot explain my passion to convey Quran. My heart cries. I just, I, if I have a dream for the whole ummah that we stand in and the imam is reading and the whole congregation is on one page with deep understanding of that verse. Not, not a cursory understanding, an in-depth understanding. Not a cursory, not, not a pure, just knowing Arabic. No, 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 no. There's, there's much more to it. There's just much more to it. That's my dream and my desire. And I've said it, I will die with this passion and I ask Allah to take this passion to the world. So why is the devil on the earth? Because it's a place of ibtila. Why is it? That's the wisdom. Now, what's the wisdom of the wisdom? That is wara ul wara. That is beyond my comprehension and outside your domain. Don't step into that boundary. It doesn't belong to you. It's, it's outside my crib. Who told you to venture? Trespassers will be prosecuted. But suddenly in the domain of the Almighty, everybody wants to poke their nose. These are things outside our control. So Allah says, I have sent the devil and I've given him certain power and access. And then he whispers and he injects and he interferes. وَمَا كَانَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِالْآخِرَةِ مِمَّنْ هُوَ مِنْهَا فِي شَكْ It's a bit academic, but I hope those that are into tafsir and Quran will appreciate it. But those that are not, I will try and simplify it. And I will conclude on this note. And the note that I'm giving... The message that I'm concluding is Allah's plan is in place. Nothing has changed with Allah's plan. Nobody can overpower. You see, a lot of times people have this. this again, it's a, a bit of a side comment, but it's an important thing. Uh, hey, but these guys think tanks. Hey, but they're intelligence. Hey, but they're conspiracy theory. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on for a moment. There is a think tank. There is a plan. plan. There is a strategy. And there is all this happening. But be very careful. Don't ever consider those think tanks and those plans and strategies to be absolute. They are also subject to Allah's allowance. 
So I'll tell you why I'm saying this here. There's witchcraft. May Allah protect one and all. It's real. It's in the Quran. It's in the Quran. It's in the Quran. I mean, I, I, it, for me, it's absolute. I, I don't need to say anything more. Allah says people through witchcraft, you know what they can do? They can separate a husband and wife. فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِ Separate husband and wife. Now you say, hey, when this guy is here, he's bad, he's got a bad reputation, he's nasty, the way he was looking at me, obnoxious, I'm afraid, I'm skeptical, I don't know what it is. This guy, somebody said, be careful if he comes to your house and he leaves behind some water in a glass. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on for a moment. The next verse Allah says, this is what they do, this is how evil witchcraft is, but they cannot possibly inflict that harm on you if Allah doesn't allow it to happen. Now people elevate the witchcraft to be an absolute power. Only Allah is absolute. Allah says the same thing. They sit, they think, they plot, they have conspiracy. To create depression in the Muslims. Please go translate this for yourself. Their private meetings, their private sittings. From the devil to whisper depression to the believers. But let the believers know it cannot harm them if Allah doesn't allow this to go through. Now it's a world. Allah allows things to happen. His wisdom is complete. It would be naive for a student to think if the examiner came by him and said, Oh, what you writing? Oh, nice, nice. That's good. I think the answer is right. Because the examiner didn't say it was wrong. I used to always tell my students, don't be deceived at my smile. I fail with a smile. <laughs> I fail with a smile. So he said, no, he's in a good mood. He was talking. No, no, no. My days are done. Why must I be depressed? I'll be smiling and give you red. <laughs> they know it. My students will tell you I've done it. I mean, not, not maliciously. If, if it's merit, it's merited. But, but it's very wrong to conclude on my facial expressions the outcome of the result. Because that's independent. That's merit-driven. So I'm going to come there and say, oh, OK, great, <laughs> nice. OK, I, th I think I got a cue from there. He's kind of happy. Yes. No, it's a place of exams. Allah's wisdom is complete. Why he allows things to happen, this is in his knowledge. So Allah says, the devil is here. He whispers to you. And he whispers. Allah wants to see who responds to his whisper. Illa li na'lam, so that we see, may yu'minu bil akhirah. Who believes in Akhirah? Listen, this is the very key point. This is the very key point. The devil comes, he throws this whisper, and he creates this restlessness and this uneasiness and this panic in you. And Allah has given you choice, mind, intelligence, etc. Now you've got to process, comprehend, understand, digest, internalize, imbibe, etc. So Allah wants to see who believes in Akhirah. And the common contrast would be against who doesn't believe. You contrast morning with night, hot with cold, white with black, summer with winter. You don't contrast morning with afternoon. No, I'm by his house every morning and afternoon. Nobody says that. Every morning and evening. This, the, you have to see how the academics dissect the Quran in everything. So they raise the question, why did Allah contrast belief with doubt and not belief with disbelief? Allah said, the devil comes, it's not an Arabic lesson, but I need you to understand this. And I keep on telling people in my talk, break your head to try and understand Quran. Even if you didn't understand it, you'll, you'll, you'll be rewarded. You break in your head to understand economics, my hay is going, your hay is going, who understood what? And there's no reward. No, it's not like this, I'm telling you, it works like this. No, 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 hey, but relax, right? Some people get personal, you know, talking of sports or anything, people get personal. That's why they say when you're having a social meal, talk pleasant things. Don't get into personal discussions. I, 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 you know, two things finish me up after a talk. Person comes to me and says, oh, your talk was amazing, man. Give me some advice. <laughs> what? What? 
Wallah, you touched my heart. You took me on another, give me some advice. What was I doing? <laughs> now, the only time people don't ask me is when I say it. So like now I know today I won't get it, alhamdulillah. <laughs> or unless in a hilarious way somebody will say, hey, give me advice, you know. And the second thing is after a long talk, you sit down and then you get these guys, you know what, who have to show their muscle and they come with this complex, intricate, delicate question here, philosophical. I'm like, chill, man, eat. Back off. Let's, let's, let's have a good meal, man. Why, why are you going to get into personal things that are going to trigger certain differences? Let's have a good meal, man. Our food is not good. Let's at least eat it in a good way. <laughs> in English, they say, eat your food like medicine. Or else, you will have to eat your medicine like food. And that's where we are. We, we don't eat what's good. We eat what's nice. So... I mean, what we eating? We just eating all. So Allah said, "The devil is here, and he does his whispers to see who believes in Allah and who doubts." Allah didn't contrast belief with disbelief. Adala anhu li nuktatin wa hi al idan bi anna adna marati bil kufri wa huwa shakku muhlikatun wa illam yujad maahu juhudun. To indicate that if the devil has planted doubt in your mind about anything that is tantamount to disbelief and as lethal and as destructive as disbelief is. We ask Allah to grant us absolute conviction on his promise. We ask Allah to restore the honor and the dignity of the Ummah. We ask Allah to give victory and success to our brethren. We ask Allah to put an end and to grip and seize the hand of tyrants. We ask Allah, you know, a lot of time people say, but Allah has power. Why doesn't Allah just stop the hand of the tyrant? Well, Allah has power to also cut your tongue when you speak a lie. Why don't you wish that at your, your point as well? Allah has power to seize your vision when you roam your gaze as well. Or it's only selectively that you want Allah. This is a world of exams. It's a world of exams. Allah allows things that are happening. Allah's plan is on place. Don't lose hope. MashaAllah, we say Jazakumullah khairan to Maulana for that beautiful, beautiful talk. Alhamdulillah. I'm sure that we all enjoyed it. It's, uh, to see Maulana live is amazing. Maulana, Allahu Akbar. I've looked at all the YouTube clips already, but now this was the tops for me, Maulana. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bring Maulana back many, many more times to us. Amin, Rabbil Amin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use Maulana, inshaAllah ta'ala, in the service of deen, in the service of the ummah, inshaAllah ta'ala, for all the great... Sterling work that Maulana is doing. May Allah reward Maulana with Jannah al Firdaus al A'la, Ma'an Nabiin, Ma Siddiqin, Ma Shuhadai, Ma Salihin, inshaAllah. And to walk Tahat al Wa'i Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Qiyamah through the doors of Jannah, inshaAllah. And as Maulana has mentioned, we shouldn't forget Maulana. Please don't forget us when Maulana enter Jannah. Take us by the hand, inshaAllah ta'ala. Amin, Rabbil Alameen. We say shukran to Maulana for really allowing and taking out of Maulana's precious time to come and just, you know, be with us and just address us with this beautiful message that has been given. May Allah allow us understanding of it, inshaAllah ta'ala, and for us to, Im and for us to implement it, inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. Hayakumullah. Jazakumullah to Maulana Wasim and to all the brothers and uh, to uh, my dear friend Hafiz Zaim. I would like to acknowledge him as well. Uh, it was an emotional note, so I don't want to be omitting it. He's been uh, tagging me for a long time uh, for this uh, short visit, and it's been a back and forth, and I've been traveling quite extensively, and I think uh, it's been going on for the better part of three to four months, but he's persevered, and today Allah's uh, allowed it to come to fruition. May Allah bless him, may Allah reward him, may Allah grant him goodness, blessings, barakah in his family, in his progeny, and may Allah make our assembly here in the scales of good deeds for everyone. Amen. Um, just a note also uh, to our beloved brother Zaim Raja, mashallah, from Masjid Al Furqan, uh, in Islamia Masjid as we know it. Uh, shukran for him, you know, for bringing Maulana, mashallah, and for hosting Maulana and for allowing all the programs uh, in Cape Town and the surroundings, mashallah. May Allah reward you and take you from strength to strength. And please, you know, bring Maulana more often, inshallah. Hayakum Allah, barakallahu fikum. We'll ask uh, the adhan to be given now, inshallah. Bajan, bismillah, inshallah. Maulana is a little bit of Cape Town adhan for Maulana today. Barakallahu hayakum. Allahu Akbar. Allah. <laughs> 
Well, I can move to Cape Town if I love it so much, Michelle. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة Inshallah. We just want to thank the community today for the collection that uh, the funding is going to be, inshallah, ta'ala, going to the organizations that will be taking it to Gaza, inshallah, ta'ala, to Palestine. Uh, tonight, inshallah, we have reached the target 139,460 rand today, alhamdulillah. 